is Pukeology Podcast, where science meets your hilarious puke stories and the tips and tricks to stop that up chuckle that you need. You never know what's going to spew out of her mouth. Here's my mama, Dr. Puke Nemo. When is your due date? That's the most common question that you'll be asked during your pregnancy. And unless you have an early first ultrasound or your doctor, you better rely on just your memory, right? Actually wrong. Here are four different ways to calculate how we calculate your due date in today's Pregnancy Pucology Podcast, episode 40, Due Date Calculator. Want no more morning sickness, pregnancy nausea, or how about no more headaches or migraines? Visit our sponsor, nomonausea.com, the only natural way to instantly stop your worst nausea, vomiting, or headaches now. Or just place your nomonausea band on your baby registry at Bye Bye Baby for your delivery bag, or get it shipped for free on Amazon as a Prime vendor. And remember, your little ones are always taken care of with the first ever No More Nausea Kids and No More Sleepless Nights Kids. Man, wouldn't you love to be able to have a good night's sleep? Well, your kids can too. All available at CVS and Amazon. Do you want to hear some pregnancy humor that may just make you want to pee your pants? Like you don't have to pee all the time anyway, with hilarious stories like big girls make big babies, bladder rocket, and doctor's dildo. If you want to learn more about your pregnancy, humor, and knowledge is the key to help you survive these nine months. And just know we're in this together. Today, you will learn the science behind the four different ways to calculate your due date that is formulated depending around ovulation and other medical types of facts. Now, if you've had in vitro fertilization and conceived, I'll also give you a way to help to calculate your true due date. And remember, every woman's body changes, even during ovulation before you get pregnant. We're going to go into the science of that too. Here we go in today's Pregnancy Pucology Podcast, Episode 40, Due Date Calculator. The Science of Puke, Pucology. So everyone always asks, how do you determine your due date, especially if you don't get your first ultrasound for weeks after that you know that you're pregnant? Well, pregnancy on average takes about nine months. I actually like to call it 10 months because of the fact that it is your full ninth month that people are ignoring. But it's it's 280 days from the day one of your last menstrual period. We're going to call that the LMP. So the first day of your last menstrual period is also regarded as the first day of pregnancy. That doesn't mean it was the first day that you got pregnant. Understood? Let me explain. But you may not conceive on this first date. Conception probably occurs about two weeks after the first day of your last menstrual period. Remember, that's a process, guys. So not only does the sperm have to travel, but it also has to unite with the egg. Now, the egg, believe it or not, can continue to be there for quite some period of time until it's shed at the next period. And those sperm can live uh, around 72 hours, about, you know, a couple days. So again, it's not a perfect indicative of when you're pregnant, but it gives you some sort of idea. And it's your body's way of telling you that you're pregnant when your body starts to produce those hormones. And those hormones like human chorionic gononotropin hormone, the HCG, is actually what we measure when you pee on that stick. Cool, huh? Well, determining the due date is still not 100% certain. Most women don't give birth on their actual due date. It's actually very rare that people do. Having an idea when you are likely to deliver is very important, but still, it's only an estimation. And don't be so hard fast that that's the date that you're going in. And listen, mamas, we plan everything in life. This is something that you can't plan. Why? Because it is their birthday, not just your birthday. You will only give birth when your baby is ready, which can occur any time between right around 38 weeks to 42 weeks. Now, if you're like me, they say a a full-grown baby is after 36 weeks, and I serve my baby's eviction notices early. So after 37 weeks is when my babies say, hey, I got to get out of here. I'm too big for this small space, and I've actually had two of my children at 37 weeks. 
So if you're not certain about your due date, seek the help of your healthcare provider. Your OBGYN can do an ultrasound to measure the baby and all of its vital organs and guesstimate your due date. They consider the first ultrasound the gold standard for a reliable due date, and you can then backtrack it just in case problems arise during the pregnancy to make sure that your baby is growing appropriately. If you're interested to see how an ultrasound works, or you're really just curious what is ultrasound, those ultrasonic, the actual sound waves, go over and listen to episode 25, Pregnancy Pathology Podcast. It's what is a sonogram and all the information of the medical behind it and how we use it to be able to measure the vital organs of your baby. So the due date calculator, or the estimated due date, EDD, is the date at the beginning of labor that is likely to occur. You know, it is approximately calculated by adding 280 days, which is nine months and seven days, to the first day of the last menstrual period. Notice, again, that we said we're adding 280 days, which is nine months and seven days, to the first day of your last menstrual period. Think about it, ladies. You could again, be pregnant two weeks beforehand, which makes it about nine months and almost four weeks. So that makes you a total pregnant of 10 months if you deliver directly on your due date. Still, the accuracy is only estimated and it really relies upon the mother's memory and a very regular cycle. If you have a regular 28-day cycle, assuming the ovulation and conception happened on day 14 of your cycle, when you're the most fertile, you can use the last menstrual period to determine your due date. So there are multiple different ways to calculate your due date if your menstrual strike cycles are regular, again, every 28 days. And for some of us, it's 28 days. For some of us, it's 30 days. Some of it's 31. So again, you have to know your own body, and then you can adjust accordingly by either adding or subtracting two or three. Now, if you're like me, I was a gymnast and a cheerleader all the way throughout college, so my periods have been irregular since I first started getting my period at the tender age of 15. Again, you have to estimate that. So both of my babies had to be guesstimated based around um, the first ultrasound that I had. And on my second one, let me tell you a little secret. I didn't know I was pregnant. So for four months, I was trying to lose weight and couldn't figure out why I had this little pooch. Now, I was still having spotting or bleeding and I have very light periods. So I just assumed that I was having my period. And or for me to skip a month or two was not anything crazy. So it didn't raise an alarm. It was only until I went to my GYN to sign up for some, you know, woman helpful um, hormone stuff to help me to lose weight that I realized that I was already pregnant 16 weeks into it. So let's just say it was a very short pregnancy for me. Now, Nagella's rule. This is the rule that involves the basic calculation of where you add seven days to the first day of your last menstrual period and then subtract three months. Here's an example. If your last menstrual period was January 2nd of 2020, you add seven days, so January 9th, 2020, and subtract three months, October 9th, 2020. Therefore, your due date will be October 9th, 2020. If your last menstrual period was the 29th of December, 2019, Let's do one together. What is your estimated due date? So use Nagella's rule in order to determine. And if you don't have a pen right now as you're listening, don't worry. It'll all be up on the Pregnancy Pecology podcast page where you can actually see them in live view of how you calculate it. Now, they have these pregnancy wheels, and actually my OBGYN used them. The pregnancy wheel is a common method used by doctors to calculate the due dates. The pregnancy wheel makes it very easy to estimate your own due date, and it works first by locating the date of your last menstrual period on the wheel. Then you line it up to the date of your last menstrual period with the indicator, and it displays your due date. Again, they're utilizing a formula understanding that every woman is approximate 28 day cycles. If you skip around cycles, it might not be right. And try Nagella's rule because again, that's all the calculation. So how to calculate your conception date? Notice that's different. 
If you have a regular period, you are likely to conceive in about two to three weeks, which is 11 to 21 days after the first day of your last period. Knowing when you're ovulating, meaning when you release an egg, is very challenging, and that is why most women fail to know their exact date of conception. Thus, your conception date is estimated based day one of your last period. If you ladies had to use IVF, um, which uh, many of my friends did, they actually have a different, it's called an in vitro fertilization or IVF, a special case in which your healthcare provider will know exactly the date that you conceived. Although no due date is guaranteed, IVF due dates tend to be more accurate than those of natural pregnancies. There are various ways of calculating your due date based on the type of IVF you had. If you had egg retrieval date, you add 266 days, which is 38 weeks, to the egg retrieval date if you have IVF with your own eggs with a fresh donor of eggs cycle or with fresh donor embryos. So again, you're just going to add 266 days to the retrieval date. And remember, everything with IVF is extremely strict on timing. Um, It matters. So they will know whenever they end up harvesting eggs and then putting them obviously back inside of the woman. And everything is very well calculated to give you the most perfect and hopefully um, to be able to bless you with a wonderful child. The transfer date. You can add 266 days or 38 weeks if you have had IVF with a three-day FET. Then you're going to subtract three days for the embryo. Subtract the exact age of the embryos in the case where your embryo's age is more than three days. Add 266 days or 38 weeks if you've had IVF with a five-day FET. Then you're going to subtract five days for the blastocyte. If the blastocyte's age is more than five days, subtract their exact age. Everything will be shown on the actual podcast page so that you can see them in real time. So go and try to see if you can calculate your conception date and your actual due date. Let's have some fun with math. Growing up on a Tuesday? One puke story. Ah, ah, ah. I'm in vet school with my first child and not a petite woman. We were watching a calf be born. I did not know what overcame me, but my morning sickness had never been so bad. Maybe I felt for that mom and I thought that was going to be me in a few months. I literally up chucked in the barn in front of my professor, classmates, and the mooing cow even looked up. I'm so scared to have this baby. (laughs) Thank you, Mama Moo. Big big moms do not make big babies. Uh, Don't worry. It is not the exact same. And luckily, you have an incredible support system to help you give birth. Like this podcast. But thanks for your hilarious big story, too. It made me giggle. Bladder rocket. Well, they told me to have a full bladder. As a teacher, I know exactly how to do that. I'm basically a camel. This was my second baby, and she pressed down so hard I peed a little bit. I felt it drip down my leg in the examination paper and totally grossed me out that I got nauseous. I sat up really fast and the ultrasound tech asked if everything was okay. Before you knew it, I puked all over myself. Oh my gosh. Luckily, she was wearing gloves and I think she said to the staff, now that's a first. Uh, Thanks, Lori. Go Cougars uh, for that hilarious puke story. I have to say, I don't recall having a patient puke on me during an ultrasound. Again, may happen, but I've never had it happen as of yet to date. Have you ever had a vaginal ultrasound? If not, let me help you out. The doctor puts on a condom on top of the probe that looks like a dildo. The lube was cold and she didn't even give me warning. As I felt it slide in and her moving up, she must have triggered something when she lifted up and like a reflex, I threw up on my boobs. <laughs> Luckily, they got bigger with this pregnancy and they're not just cum- crumb catchers, they're puke catchers as well. Thanks, Lala Queen, for that hilarious puke story. Now, ladies out there, do you have 
a hilarious puke story that you just can't wait to share with me, send it to me. Pukeology, P-U-K-E-O-L-O-G-Y at nomonaja.com or tweet us at Pukeology so we can all have a good laugh. (laughs) Tips and tricks to stop the up chuckle that you need. So how can you tell if you're ovulating? Ladies, I'm about to blow your mind with science backed and how we change. Now, again, this portion of it is for all my ladies who are not yet pregnant or who are wanting to get pregnant and just recognize how your body changes to let you know, hey, fertile Myrno, get me pregnant. So it's really interesting and it changes over time with age. Our clocks really do tick. Most of you lovely ladies are past this point because you were ovulating, you had sex, you got pregnant, and now that's just history. But some of my listeners are women who want to conceive. This one's for you. Research shows that when a woman's ovulating, her behavior changes from the way that she dresses to the way that she flirts. Studies show that a woman's ovulation behavior can help companies sell ovulation detection kits, market targeted clothing and jewelry that is very blingy, I must add, and even boosting their online dating prospects. Lots of swiping for all of you single ladies. The work also suggests that the type of birth control pill a woman is on or off could influence a woman's choice in a man. I find all of this like super fascinating, but the physician in me wants to see the data, wants to know the medical side of it. So here we go. A woman when ovulating supercharges their femininity as an innate, subtle strategy to both attract the most desirable guys and convince them to stick around as shown by evolutionary psychologist Greg Bryant from the University of California. Studies in the 1990s show a female spiked interest for muscular muscular masculine men with deep voices and symmetrical faces because... Like men that look like George Clooney generally tend to have a dominant social role, meaning that they have better genes and stronger immune systems, making them likely candidates for us women to be able to want to mate with. Social psychologists also found that women are most likely to cheat on their partners while ovulating for the same drive for a hyper-masculine man when they are unhappy, especially with their current partners. Men can actually smell a fertile woman Yes, the Journal of Psychological Science found that men prefer the smell of women who are more fertile in a blind smell test of their t-shirts when they were ovulating versus the smell of a woman when they were not. The Journal of Evolution and Human Behavior found that lap dancers got higher tips when they were most fertile, and the reasons are really going to astound you. A woman's body goes through lots of changes while ovulating. Subtle but detectable upward shifts in their voice pitch happens, and her voice is highest the day that she releases an egg. Now, all of you ladies are probably not attracted to my voice, but if you are a man, believe it or not, I am ovulating, and the way that I know is because I'm exactly two weeks after my last menstrual period. So my voice pitch happens to be a little higher than normal, and it's interesting that the voice is highest the day that she releases an egg. Bryant found that ovulating women sway their hips more when they walk and stand more defensive in their upper body. Chest out, girls. Think the Kim Kardashian stance and walk. That's exactly what we do when we're fertile. Fertile women also want to be in social settings, so we love being surrounded by people, especially when we're ovulating. And we tend to show a little skin or more skin when we actually go out. The Journal of Consumer Research shows that women are drawn to sexier outfits, higher shoes like super cute high-heeled shoes, and accessories that are very bright and colorful and stand out because they want to dress in a way not necessarily to attract men, but to outbeat other women. Catfight. Meow. Interesting, right? So it's not because that they want to attract a man, it's because they want to be the leading female of the pack. 
The pupil of a woman's eyes also becomes larger in diameter with anything that causes sexual stimulation during ovulation, and they get the widest when a picture of their mate is shown to them while they're ovulating, meaning that we are creatures that love and we love strong. And believe it or not, if you ever go on a date night when you're ovulating, your man will find you more attractive because your eyes are open even more. Think of it like Puss in Boots when he gives you those big kitty eyes or what we call puppy dog eyes. You give it to your man too, and you're literally telling him, give it to me. A woman's body temperature slightly increases by 0.5 to 1 degrees Fahrenheit because of the hormone progesterone during ovulation. And this is used in some religious entities that do not believe in birth control as family planning. The actual name of it, family planning method, must be taken from your basal body temperature. So your basal body temperature, BBT, is how you're going to measure it every day. And you're actually going to take it vaginally, not oral. Again, you're going to take it vaginal. Here are the steps for measuring your basal um, body temperature. Take vaginal temperature after waking up while still lying in bed before you sit all the way up. Take your temperature every day at the same time. Use a special thermometer for precise rounding and accuracy within 0.1 degree Fahrenheit. Make notes of days that are unreliable. And unreliable days, for example, are changes in sleep patterns. When you are disturbed or have interrupted sleep. When you have jet lag or heavy drinking the night before. When you're Mm -hmm. ill, when you're sick, have medications that you may be taking because all of these things can cause your menstrual cycle to change. And you want to make sure that you're a person that naturally has a consistent or steady flow, meaning every 28 days you get your period on the dot. Breastfeeding moms who want to have another baby soon, not immediately after, may want to consider the family planning method of temperature so that they don't have to go on hormonal birth control supplements. Remember that the typical body temperature ranges from 97 to 99 degrees Fahrenheit, but will vary between women. So any rise in your basal temperature of 0.5 to 1 degrees Fahrenheit means you're ovulating. And then all you have to do, ladies, is every day graph it. I will say, me being the Catholic that I am, the family planning method was exactly what I ended up using when me and my husband were uh, apart from one another in a distance type of way. So you can use this um, if you don't want to go back on birth control. Now it is less accurate than utilizing birth control, but I felt like I should probably tell you. Today, you've learned how to calculate your due date how to calculate your conception date, even if you've had IVF, what does that actual physical formula look like? And not only the four different ways to calculate your due date, but also how a woman's body changes during ovulation because it's longing and needing to get pregnant. And don't forget, we told you how to do the family planning method utilizing a temperature so that you don't necessarily have to go back on birth control if you want to get pregnant once again. If you loved Pregnancy Pugology podcast, let me know with five-star hearts with and ratings for likes. Don't forget to download this episode, but more importantly, share it with all your prego friends. Thanks again for listening to Pregnancy Pugology podcast, episode 40, Due Date Calculator. See you next time. Pugology podcast, edutainment at its finest.